Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. As we made an announcement that we are going to start with a series on design patterns. So here we are starting today with the first design pattern called the Builder Design Pattern. So let's get started. So what are the things that we are going to cover as part of today's session? First we will talk about what this pattern is about. Then what is the problem this is going to solve using an example. We will see how exactly the Builder Pattern helps us to solve the problem. Then we'll do a code comparison like before and after, before using the pattern, how the code look like. And then after using the pattern, how the optimized code is going to look like. We'll discuss a few real world scenarios in which, in which the builder design pattern will be used. Uh, there will be some problem statements at the end, which you can practice afterwards so that you can master your understanding of the builder design pattern. Uh, and to wrap it up, we are going to have a quiz at the end so that uh, you can just revise the concepts that we are going to cover as part of this session. So let's start with an example. Suppose you are at a pizza restaurant. So we know that whenever we order pizza, there is certain level of customization which the customers can ask for. So if I have to design that as a software developer, how the code I will be writing for this, where the customization will be taken care of. So let's see the code for that. So suppose there is a class pizza. Okay, so just a small disclaimer. We'll talk about classes and object because the primary programming language is Java that we are going to use in this session and Java follows object oriented programming paradigm. So we are going to talk in terms of classes and objects very frequently. So if you look at the, this code example, so if you look at this code snippet, there is a public class pizza and whatever the characteristics are there for the pizza are defined as the instance variables, the size, the crust, the sauce, the topics. After that, we use something called constructors. So for those of you who do not know what constructors are, there are special methods which help us to create an object. What is the object over here? The pizza. Pizza is an object over here. So if at all I have to create a pizza for a customer with the customizations, then I have to create a pizza object. How will I create a pizza object? I'll use a constructor to create a pizza object. Now, what is happening is, see how beautifully they have try to incorporate the preferences the customers are trying to ask. Uh, so, for example, I went to an outlet and asked, okay, I need a pizza of large size. I do not care what is the crust. I do not care what toppings you're going to give me. I just want the crust. I just want the size to be a large pizza. So, the first constructor will be called for that. That, okay, the customer is saying only the size can be given as input. Let's call this constructor. But if I as a customer want to give three things as, so if I say I want a large pizza, but the crust should be thin crust and I will specify a certain type of sauce that I want. So then I want this constructor to be called to create my pizza as per my preferences. So as we can see, every constructor is trying to serve the certain type of customization that customer is asking for. Okay. So this is how we are able to take care of that customization logic by using these many constructors. Now, if we see the client code, that is the main method in which the actual objects are being created. So here we see there are three pizza objects that is being created. In the first one, we are specifying the size, the crust, the sauce and the topics. So let's talk about what are the problems that we faced. Firstly, there are multiple constructors like we saw. There were four constructors with varying number of parameters. And then it is hard to remember the order. Like you see in this client code, if I'm creating pizza one object, I have to put first the size and then the crust and then the sauce. If I interchange any of the parameters, the object will not get created. Errors will come. Thirdly, there's tight coupling between the client code and the constructor. Like if tomorrow I change any of the constructor or add a new instance variable, create new constructor, then the client code also has to be modified accordingly. Okay. So that is very difficult and that is making the code very rigid. I have to change the client code if I'm changing the construction process, which is wrong. And then client code has to know. So when the pizza objects are being created, constructor, which one I have to call the client has to decide. Okay, if the customer is giving a preference of only size, I have to call this particular constructor. Or if the customer is giving a preference of size and crust, I have to call the other constructor. The client code has to decide, which again should not be the case. And then same kind of process, repetitive behavior. So the pizza construction process is the same. It's a standard procedure. But just because I want to cater to the customer preferences is, is the reason why I'm creating so many different types of constructor. One with like with different combinations. Like somebody is saying, I want to be a 
giving a preference of only the size or someone else is saying i don't care about the size just i want to give a preference of the crust and the toppings the other person is saying i don't care about anything i just care about the customization of the toppings so to cater to the customer demand so many different types of constructors are being created and as a result of that there's a repetition in the process now what is the builder design pattern we saw the example, we saw the problem. Now, what is the builder design pattern? Let's introduce this design pattern. So, it's a creational design pattern. There are three types of design pattern, creational, structural, functional. Creational means anything that has got to do with the creation of objects. Mainly what this design pattern does is it separates out the construction process of the object from the representation of the object. In the client code, uh, in the PISA class, if you see, we are so much bothered about the construction of the PISA because we are specifying multiple constructor, how this PISA will be getting created, how that PISA will be getting created and all of that. But builder design pattern will separate out that construction. How will it do? By providing us a separate builder class only. So that class's responsibility will be to only worry about the construction logic. How will I construct the PISAs? So that will be the only responsibility of the builder class and not of the PISA class. So as a result of that, this is the separation of concern that we are doing. So because of that, we will be able to create different types of PISA object by just, you know, by changing the steps of the construction. We'll see that shortly. So if you are doing this, what is the problem that we are trying to solve? Of course, we are trying to simplify the construction of the PISA object because PISA in itself is a complex object like we can see from an example. Any complex object creation, if you want to simplify that, use builder design pattern. Uh, why is it complex object? Again, if any object's creation requires a lot of steps are involved, it can be a complex object. When we see the real world scenario, we'll discuss a bit more about that. Secondly, it is trying to encapsulate the construction process from the client code. Client code currently is bothered about which constructor to call to create my PISA object. Client code need not be that much bothered. So because I'm trying to separate out the logic, now the client code doesn't have to bother about which constructor I have to call. After that, it is trying to accommodate the same construction process. So you see, PISA process, if you have any, if you have gone to any PISA outlet, the process of creating the PISA is the same. They'll take the dough, they'll uh, make the crust, they'll add the sauce, they'll put the cheese and the toppings. The process of creation is the same. But the only problem over here, what we saw in the very first slide is customers' preferences, customers' customizations. Because we want to cater to that, because of that reason only, there are so many constructors that were added. Now, if the process of construction is same to just to create different types of pizza, why do I need to overcomplicate it? So, builder design pattern will take care of this part also. And then to handle optional or dependent uh, or the mandatory attributes, like I told, for a customer, a crust and the size can be important. For another customer, only toppings can be important. So, for the customer, for whom toppings are important, he doesn't care about crust and the size. So, for that person, these two parameters are optional. I don't care. So, then what I'll do, I'll call that constructor which only focuses on initializing the toppings. Doesn't matter what crust I'm giving, doesn't matter what size I'm giving. So, builder design pattern will help us to handle that aspect also. And then loose coupling. So, like we said, there was a tight coupling. There was a problem. There was a tight coupling between the client code and the constructor. The client has to be bothered about which constructor to be called. And if there is any change, the client code will be affected. So, this will not happen in this case. Because the separation of concern comes into the play by creating a different builder class. Finally, if all of these problems are being solved by the builder design pattern, obviously the code is going to be much more flexible and more maintainable. Now, the million dollar question, how is the builder design pattern going to help us? Firstly, it is trying to break the object construction process into different, into like separate steps. Okay. And each step will have a separate method. So, as a result of this, the code will be much more cleaner, more flexible and easy to use. So every parameter like toppings and crust and size, I'm giving the example of pizza only, every parameter will have a separate method. So it is very clear, like very clear, uh, the focus is very clear, the direction is very clear. So if every method is only focused on that 
parameters initialization only i can play around with that whenever i need it i'll call that method if i don't need it i won't call that method that's it simple and then there will be a separate builder class which i told so that class's responsibility will be only to be worried about the construction process that's it so now let's move to the ide to see how will the optimized code for the same pizza class look like now so into the ide so this is the pizza class that we have seen earlier uh, i've removed the extra constructor kept only one construct which has all the instance variables we are going to see now in the builder class this is the pizza builder class it's a completely separate class so all the pizza variables are going to remain the same okay there will be one constructor called the pizza builder class in which we are initializing the size of the pizza first then separate methods are there like for the crust for the sauce for the toppings so now what is going to happen is let's say i want to initialize the crust so i'll just say crust which is my private instance variable over here is equal to the value whatever value is coming in and then i'll say return this this is nothing but the object so you initialize the crust to the given value and you return this same i'm going to do it for the source whatever source you are giving to me initialize it and return the object itself and then for the toppings and then toppings is equal to it's a list so i'm going to do arrays dot as list and then the values whatever that's coming so so now that i'm done with creating all the different methods for all the parameters in the pizza builder class now notice right now there is no connection between this pizza builder and the pizza class is there any connection no right we have to establish a connection means if i'm using a builder class to build my pizza okay i'm i'm using this crust sauce now what what is how am i going to join this to the pizza class so i have to build the pizza right i have to create or the construct the pizza so for that i'll use another method which is going to return a type pizza and i'll say build pizza okay so i'll just just say this and then within this what i'll say i'll say return new pizza with all the different uh parameters that it needs like the size and the crust and the sauce because all of these are anyway initialized in separate separate methods that we have already seen and then call this now let's go to the main method to see it in play so into the main method i have just committed out all the uh, different objects so i'll first use the pizza builder object so i'll just create one pizza using this builder okay so i'll just give a size let's say a large pizza and then i'm just use going to use now method chaining so i'll say i have given a size now i'll say i want a crust thin i won't specify the sauce i don't care what sauce you're going to give it to me so i'll just say the toppings so in the toppings i want cheese and i just want onions only so i have given my preferences and then i'm going to call this build pizza method so when i'm calling this build pizza method more you notice that now the return type has to be changed into pizza so we see that this is the pizza object the size is large thin crust no sauce is specified and this is the toppings so we see that this is one kind of object that we created let's create two more pizzas with different types of customization i'll just say medium size thick crust and same toppings and now i'm also going to specify the sauce over here so i want tomato mint sauce let's say so i just gave one more layer of customization to my second object so as we can see over here that firstly our customizations are being taken care of there is a added flexibility if i need i will add a sauce or any given parameter so there is that clear demarcation of optional attribute and the mandatory out attribute there is so in this is just that the first constructor uh, that we have the constructor is going to take in the size as a mandatory parameter as we have specified that size customer has to specify apart from that everything else is uh, optional so that thing is the only thing which is mandatory everything else is flexible it's customized uh, customizable so let's create the second object so this is my second object with the different toppings and sauce and crust and size so this is how we are seeing the optimized code from one pizza class to the client code to one pizza class a builder class in between and then the client code 
now let's move on okay so now let's discuss a few real world use cases for the builder design pattern so firstly we know that whenever we send emails an email if we consider that as an object it has so many different attributes starting from to whom we want to send the email what should be the subject of the email what should be the body of the email if it can have any attachments or not so if you think of email as an object it is actually a very complex object it has so many attributes the construction of the email has many different steps so this can be a great example where the builder design pattern can be used whenever we are trying to create an email object in the same manner like using a different builder class and then every attribute will have a separate method because again an email may or may not have an attachment it must have a sender it must have a receiver that's the reason why email clients like outlook and gmail etc also try to use builder design pattern when they are constructing email objects another example can be for a car now when we want to create a car object even that construction can be very complex because there are so many different attributes the values can be different some can be optional some can be mandatory so in that case also we can use the builder design pattern to construct a car object so now it's quiz time let's attempt a few mcqs based on what you have understood the first question is what is the builder design pattern used for creating complex objects step by step approach defining the blueprint of an object creating multiple objects from the same class and storing and retrieving objects so only one of the options will be correct so based on the understanding of the concepts that we have discussed you can attempt this question this is the first mcq moving on the second one which of the following is the benefit of using the builder design pattern improved performance reduced complexity of code increased encapsulation or all of the above the third question is which of the following is an example of when to use the builder design pattern when you need to create an object with many optional parameters when you need to create an object that is simple and doesn't have many attributes or when you need to create an object that can only be created once or when you need to create an object that is already predefined so you can comment down your answers to this mcqs in the comments below so that's all for today's video thank you so much for watching hope you found it useful and informative and if you did please consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel for more content like this thanks again see you in the next video